Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to look at another aspect of how we calculate forces on moving charges. In this case we're going to look at the forces on a current carrying wire. So the problem that I use as an example here says that what is the force on a 2 meter long segment of a wire carrying a current uh, of 15 amps perpendicular to a 1.2 tesla strong magnetic field. So let's draw a picture of that to get a feel for it. So let's say we have a magnetic field Say it's a perpendicular like this, there's our magnetic field, the field, and let's say that we have a, um, a wire in the field, so here's our current carrying wire that carries a current I through the magnetic field, and of course that uh, means that there's a whole bunch of charges moving along this wire, and the charges look like they're perpendicular to the field, which means they're going to experience a force. And uh, let me get my red pen here. So the direction of force would be as follows. You take your right hand, assuming that these are positive charges. You point your fingers in the direction of the uh, current, the direction of the velocity of the charges. Then you move your hand in such a way you can, that so you can curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which means that the forces on the wire, on the charge in the wire, will be out of the board. So that means you're going to have charge, charges, or I'm sorry, forces directed outward from the board. And so this would be the force on this current carrying wire. So at least we know the direction of the force. What about the magnitude of the force? Well, we know that the force on a single charge is equal to Q times the velocity times the strength of the B field times the sine of the angle between the direction of the charges and the direction of the B field. In this case, the charges the direction of the charges and the B field are perpendicular to each other, which means the angle is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, so we can write this is equal to QVB. Now, what would be the force on all the charges in this wire? All charges. Well, if you then assume that there's n number of charges, if n, big N, represents the number of charges in that wire within this 2 meter long segment, so if you say that the length here is equal to 2 meters like so, uh, then in the current we said was 15 amps, and the strength of the B field was equal to 1.2 teslas. So the force on all these charges in the wire would be equal to the charge, the force on one charge times the number of charges, and if N represents the number of charges, it would be N times Q V times B. Again, assuming that the direction of the of the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of the charges. Now, how do we find out how to solve that problem? So we go back to the concept of the drift velocity. In a current carrying wire, we know that the total current through the wire is equal to the number of charges per unit volume. So this here, N, represents the number of charges per unit volume per cubic meters, uh, times the size of each charge, Q, times the drift velocity of the charges through the wire, times the cross-sectional area of the wire. So that's the total current in the wire. Now, if we, um, if we solve this for V sub D and substitute that in for V over here, let's do that. Let's see what we end up with. So we can say that V drift is equal to I divided by n, q, and a. So n, q, and a, and we'll substitute that back into our velocity over here. So we come over here and substitute that in for that v right there. So the force on all the charges in this current carrying wire, the two meter length of it, should be n, the total number of charges in the wire, times q, times the velocity, which is i, divided by n, q, a, and then times, uh, let's see, NQA, and then times B. I can't forget the B field right there. And then right away I realize that I have Q up here and Q down there, so that cancels out. Now, how do I relate the total number of charges to the charge density, which means the number of charges per unit volume, and this represents the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, if I multiply the cross-sectional area of the wire times the length of the wire, times L, then I get the total volume of that wire. And of course, if I multiply the denominator by L, I must also multiply the numerator by L, like so. And then I realize that A times L is volume, so this can be written as N I B L divided by N times the volume. 
Now, since n is the number of charges per unit meter, per, per cubic meter, per unit volume, and I multiply times the volume, little n times v is actually big n, the total number of charges in the wire. So this can be written as n i b l divided by n, and then you realize that n's cancel out, and now we're left with that the force on all the charges in the current carrying wire is simply equal to the current times the B field, the magnetic field, times the length of the wire. So, summarizing that over here, we can simply say that the force is equal to I times B times L. And all we have to do is plug in what those numbers are. For the current, we had 15 amps. For the B field, we had 1.2 Teslas. And for the length, we had 2 meters, I believe. Yes, 2 meters. And uh, so that's 15 times 2, which is 30, times 1.2, which is 36. So this is equal to 36 amps times Tesla times meters. Now, remember the definition of Tesla was Newton per amp times meter. So, so this is equal to 36 times amps. And Teslas, I'll put little brackets around that. Remember, Tesla was a Newton per amp meter times meter. Then you see that amps and meters cancel out. And we're left with newtons, so this is equal to 36 newtons. And that's the magnitude of the force on this wire. Two, that's a wire of length 2 meters, current, carrying a current of 15 amps, which is a pretty strong current, in a very strong magnetic field of 1.2 teslas. And that wire will feel a force of 36 newtons. And that's how you do a problem like that.